yeah, from our point of view, it's getting the message of the performance of the products and things like that. That's 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 what people respond to when they can mm. see value. They respond to it. And it's about being visible, isn't it? Which yeah. is, again is why we did the show. It's yeah. why people like yourself come on. You get the yeah. chance to. And it's about educating, isn't yeah. it? Um, and yeah, and that's yeah. Key is the education piece. Yeah, key is the education piece. If the consumer can see there's value, yeah. they're prepared to pay for it. Yeah, um, and I think you know, and that's and that is the happy place. Yeah, it's tricky. It's, it's all about that customer journey, isn't it? Which is yeah. so different now. There's, yeah. there's so many different routes in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, from, from your point of view, how how would you go about buying a car these days? Are, are you, um, are you I'm, walking to a dealership, I'm, or I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I'm 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 very yeah. I and again, you know, the average. I, uh, yeah, the average time that people spend, and you know, bear in mind, some people don't spend any time on the internet. The average time is a hundred hours of research. Yeah, I'm probably maybe even more than that. So I will have geeked out on all the features. Yeah, and I'm pretty much this is what I want. Yeah. Um, so I'm a I'm I'd be a terrible customer to be kind of walked through a uh, you know a, a process. Hello and welcome back to the Armchair Show, where today we are joined by Rob Earl from G Technic. How are you doing, Rob? I'm very well. Excellent. Very well. Not too much of a long journey for you today, was it? Fifteen minutes. Yeah, not not long at all. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, for the uninitiated much. amongst our audience, um, can you tell us a bit about what G Technic do? Um, I guess we're best known for ceramic coatings for uh, paintwork for for cars. Um, that's kind of the predominant part of our business. Okay. Um, been around for, it'll be 20 years next year. Right. Um, we were pretty much one of the very first companies doing this kind of thing. And it's essentially, it's something that you would use in place of a wax or a polymer sealant. It's just the durability, the performance you get from that, that type of product is, it's demonstrably longer uh, than, than previous generation type of products. So it's something we all come into contact with most days actually, yes. but perhaps don't think about really. Yes, yeah, absolutely. The best products, really, because they, they do such yeah. a good job, but yeah. we, we're not always aware of it. Um, stepping back a little bit, um, what's been your own route into the industry? How, how did you get going? Um, yeah, it was, yeah, I'm not from a motor background initially. Um, it was always, yeah, kind of, I'd always had in my head that I always wanted to run, run my own business. And I was working at the time for a, an Italian company, it was a family run business. And uh, my now wife at the time said to me, um, Rob, is your name Zanotti and are you Italian? I was like, no one knows. So, well, yeah, I'm not sure how far you're going to get that. And she kind of told me something I kind of knew to be true. And, we often um, need that for a better half, yeah. don't we? Yeah. And uh, anyway, cutting a long story short, uh, a pal of mine actually started the company in, uh, in Asia. Okay. Um, he, um, his background is a quantum physicist. And he was selling a, a European product into Asia and then realized actually the durability wasn't as was being marketed and then looked around and then realized that was a fairly common thing within within the kind of paint protection industry. Mm. Um, and that was really, that was, I would call it the beard, the bang. That was where, you know, his understanding of how, uh, you know, in quantum physics is, you know, is the understanding of nanotechnology. Yep. He understood, you know, what would make a surface work um, you know how to give that durability, so it's essentially putting on a very thin and very hard coating onto the paintwork, and yeah. that's what gives it, um, you know, that it retains gloss because surface doesn't scratch so easily, and yep. also to make it bond, so it's yeah you know, the chemical bond with the paint, so it doesn't get washed off. Hmm. Um, so it's from his understanding, and then working with a, it was a happy coincidence. He was working with some alumni from Kings, um, and essentially came across a laboratory in Japan that were doing work for people like uh, Bayer Material Science. And that was really, that was the genesis of the product. Um, and then I kind of went, oh, are you doing anything in Europe? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then essentially kind of bought the European rights for it and, and really developed, yeah, from 2004, kind of developed it into what it is now from a, yeah, there were really only two products when we started. We're now up to about 20 different products. Oh, wow, fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm just glad people like him and yourself exist, really, because it's just way beyond me. Uh, but it, like, it forms such yeah, an important it's be on role, me as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and over the years that you've been in the industry, what's, um, how has it changed? Do, do you think it's changed significantly, or has it just evolved? Naturally? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm talking from a very kind of, a, a very kind of niche piece. But I, I, think, I think the bit that we're 
particularly interested in, I, I think the bit that is of relevance to a, to, a wi to, to your audience and to a, you know, the wider motor audience, and I'm sure you know, this is coming through all the time, I think, yeah, th there's always a bit of luck involved. Um, and I think you know, we caught um, really kind of the online you know, forums and the review piece, we caught that at a really good time. So <clears throat> my strategy, well, it just kind of happened that it became our strategy, was to work with car detailers. So yeah. these are the guys that spend, you know, they can spend up to 100 hours polishing a car and, you know, just getting, getting things, everything absolutely perfect. Mm. So we kind of worked with them initially. Um, and I was giving product away at the start. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they kind of thought, oh, actually, this stuff does does actually last it does work mm. so that was that was really the genesis of it um and i think you know the happy coincidence really now and i think it's kind of predominant now in everything you know i think a lot of people you know when they make decisions and i find this with everything i've just just bought a house and you, you know the amount of time you go you start looking at reviews for mops or <laughs> brushes you know you, you go and look at those things. we've all done it yeah. Yeah, yeah um and i think that's that is a really important thing so we have um, just because the products are, you know, we we are. I would call us a disruptive mm. technology there. So I think people kind of appreciate that the products do last, and I think you know the review base is out there, and we are now working. You know, we kind of backed into the dealership market to offer this uh, to them and to have something that is relevant for them. Yeah, and that is, you know, we are now. Yeah, in in the sites that are that are really kind of switched onto it, they're they're doing really well out of it. Excellent, that's good to hear. And that must give you a really interesting insight into dealerships themselves. Yes. I mean, obviously, most of our audience are, are dealerships, or, yeah. or or they are people waiting to get into the industry yeah. or just have yeah. a, a, an interest in it. Uh, what's what do you think it's like to work in that industry at the moment, from your your point of view, what, from what you've seen? Well, this moment in time, how weird is it? You know? <laughs> Very. Um, yeah. I mean, I think you know, I think from our side, we're yeah, we're seeing that obviously there's been a lot of pent up demand, and so that's just flying mm. at the moment. Uh, long may it continue. Um, um, but I think, you know, I think it's it it is cast aside what we're going through now. I think it is in, in huge flux, mm. and I think a lot of it is driven by, you know, the internet is not going away, no. uh, and I think that people really know what they want. They they've chosen everything down to. Yeah, the the wheel color. If there's a choice, they've chosen everything. Yeah, and so really they're coming in, going, this is this is kind of this is kind of what I want. Yeah, um, which I think makes, um, I think it makes it tough in you know for for people who are um, educated in what the offering is to, yeah. you know, maybe go try and direct people through a, a more traditional process. Yeah, it's tricky. It's, it's all about that customer journey, isn't it, which is yeah. so different now. And there's, yeah. there's so many different routes in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, from, from your point of view, how, how would you go about buying a car these days? Are you, um, are you I'm, walking to a dealership? I'm, or? I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm very, yeah. I, and again, you know, the average, uh, uh, yeah, the average time that people spend, and, you know, bear in mind some people don't spend any time on the internet, the average mm. time is 100 hours of research. Yeah. I'm probably maybe even more than that, so I will have geeked out on all the features, yeah. and I'm pretty much, this is what I want. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, I'm, I'd be a terrible customer to be kind of walked through a, uh, you know, a, a process. Yeah, I mean that's interesting. I mean, and with that in mind, how, how have you found that? Because um, you're going in very, very well informed, like you say. Yes. On average, people yeah. are, are much more informed than yes. ever these days. Yeah. But from the you're a bit like me. I, I'd spend a long, long yeah. way too long yeah. know, researching <laughs> everything. Um, how have you found that's been from a customer's perspective in terms of when you walk into a dealership or if you call them or whatever? Do, do they? Is the way that they deal with you? Does it feel comfortable, or do, do you feel like you're one step ahead? Um, well. We as a company, I mean, you know, we, we're not operating dealerships, um, but I think what we're trying to do is to, you know, and I think it's all, it's all about value, um, and that's the bit that we're working with, and I think, yeah, I think that if, if the consumer can see there's value, yeah. they're prepared to pay for it. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, and, that's, and that is the happy place. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think um, you know, the incentive things where things were thrown in for free. I, the customers don't really, you know. I think it's I think it's gone beyond that. So mm -hmm. I think, 
you know, I think the bit where we're trying to engage is to, yeah, people know the value yep. and are asking it by name. And to get people to ask for things by name is, is yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah, yeah, really, really yeah. tough. What do you think the automotive industry in terms of dealerships are doing well? But what, what do they do particularly well at the moment? Um, I think I think they look great. I yep. mean, you know, you go into you go into a Porsche. Do, I mean, yeah, the, the, you know, you go into front. It looks fantastic. Yeah, you can't it? help but be inspired, yeah. can you? Um, yeah. And I think it, get, it creates excitement. Um, um, I don't know personally how. Yeah, you know, I I don't know. It, it's I would have a view on that. Hmm. That I think in some cases people may not need that. Um, hmm. But I think you know generally what's being offered and you know and, and the accessibility to it, you know, what people are able to actually afford nowadays versus what they th- think they can is you know they can afford a lot nicer thing. Yeah, really. surprising actually, yes. isn't it, when you start to look at it. Yeah. Particularly with finance deals, yeah. it's much easier with yeah. finance to just yeah. spend a little bit more, yeah. not have it hurt your yeah. bank balance too much, but get a much nicer car. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, thinking about your own business again, because um, mm. obviously d- running a business, it doesn't matter what industry you're yeah. in, um, the principles are the same, it's all about people, it's yes. about what, what, yeah, you know, absolutely. experience, etc. What What do you think you do particularly well at G-Technic? Um, I think... Mm. Good question. Good question. <laughs> Let's get you talking <laughs> it's, about yourself. It's, it's a multiple thing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say we don't rush our fences. Um, and I think that, you know, we are always looking to improve, we're always looking to improve. But um, I think what we're good at is to make sure that anything that we're looking at, we really do know before we we get behind it we mm. do know how it's how it's performing so you know we spend we spend a lot of time we've got a lot of lab equipment to do weathering tests etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know i've been i've been bitten in the backside before where you think oh this this looks fantastic mm. you know we do a scrub test or whatever it might be on it oh this looks this looks amazing and then you you put it out and then it doesn't work well on a car when you you know if a car's getting covered in mud very frequently does it does it then perform very well then and quite often kind of real world versus what you find in the lab can be very different so i think i think i think it is just it's, it's probably how long we've been doing this even though 20 years is not an awful long time but within the market that we're in we are yeah we've we've got a lot of experience with it and it's just trying to um yeah make sure that that what we put out actually works and i think that's that's what we do we do that well yeah, definitely. I, I think 20 years is a long time, really. I think particularly in an industry that changes so rapidly yeah. and has seen so much yeah. change recently. Yeah. Um, when it comes to uh, finding your own customers, how, do you, how does that tend to work these days? Um, yeah, it's a lot now. I mean, initially it was a, a lot of our, our, it is through internet. On the dealership side, we have now, you know, we now have somebody responsible for our G Technic Platinum, which is our dealership offering. Yeah. Um, who is networking a lot and doing it, you know, and he's actually kind of been meeting with F and I, one of the big groups today. Yep. Um, so that bit's, yeah, so that's probably the relevant piece there. Mm. And then it's a more traditional piece. We then have um, field agents who are, you know, we they, it's very difficult now for people to go in and visit dealerships. Yep. Um, hopefully things will Hope that start, change. start yeah, relaxing definitely. a bit. But... So we, yeah, we, they would go go around and and just kind of put a, hmm. you know, get their faces in there and to, you know, to 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 see if there are any niggles and glitches that they that we can help with. Yeah, and thinking about people in the business, do you find it uh, particularly? Uh, is it challenging to to kind of draw people to the industry from your perspective? Um, uh, yes and no. It depends on the role. Yeah. Um, I think I think we've got lucky. Um, but you know, when it comes to, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, some roles we find very hard to fill. There can be kind of things like production mm. staff and and so forth that we find um, there seems to be a new trend of people kind of sending out applications to lots of people and okay, oh, okay fantastic, you know, come in for an interview and people yep. don't turn up. Like, oh, yeah. This this seems to be quite a quite a quite a thing now. Um, we we've been lucky. I mean, I think I you know we have yeah I've now got an exceptional team and, yep. and it's again there's luck there's you know treating people in a good way and 
Um, but um, yeah, um, I think, I don't know, it's, it, it, it seems odd at the moment. Um, one would think that there'd be more people applying for things. Mm. There kind of isn't at the moment. Why do you think that is? Is, is it a, a certain image that people have of, of the industry or? Um, yeah, I, I don't know really. I think, um, I, I, I think I'm talking about a wider thing here. I mm. think at the moment, even though there are a lot of people that have been let go, uh, it seems maybe there's still a lot of people on furlough. There's not a, there mm. doesn't seem to be a, a normal, you know, kind of an enormous pool to, to draw from yet, but I think that will probably change. I'm sure it will. Soon, yeah. yeah. I reckon it will. Um, we do like talking about the future here because uh, obviously things are a little bit challenging at the moment, but yes. I think what, what's been interesting recently is all the guests are still very buoyant. They're still they're, yes. they're very yeah. um, e excited, actually. Yeah. Although we're on a bit of a knife edge, I yeah. think it feels a little bit like that. I think the, the, the majority of the opinion is that things are going to get better. Yeah. And that, that kind of, um, as we've been talking about, that, very that accelerated digital transformation yes. that's happened over the last six months is actually quite a good thing. It's, yes. it's difficult to deal with, and obviously there'll be people watching this who, who are struggling with that. Um, have you got any advice for that? I mean, have you experienced yourselves um, a need to, to transform digitally quickly? Um, well, we've always been there with yep. the digital. I mean, the digital piece has been really, you know, without it, we wouldn't, yeah, you know, we wouldn't have got got anywhere. Hmm. Um, it's uh, it's just it's just the change, the rate of change is phenomenal. Mm. Um, what you think you know one day can be completely different. And then, it, it, you know, we are now, uh, in terms of how we're uh, targeting consumers, we just do it in so many different ways and kind of trying to measure, measure ROI on, on spend is, is very difficult. But, you know, I think my advice is you just got to try it. Yeah. And I think, you know, you cannot be afraid to try and see how it goes. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, certainly, I think yeah, it's working for us. You know, in ter terms of kind of getting social media feed, and it's it's also yeah, keeping the authentic voice mm. going. That is, you know, I think people, I, I think that kind of immediacy you have now with your consumers, um, you have to yeah, you have to be. You have to be straight, and there's no, you know, the days of the hard, they're over, yeah, they're gone. Got that's, that's gone out the door. That thank, really thank has, God, yeah. that has gone. Yeah. So I think, you know, having that kind of, you know, from our point of view, it's getting the message of the performance of the products and things like that. That's, that's, that's what people respond to. When they can mm. see value, they respond to it. And it's about being visible, isn't it? Which yeah. is, again, is why we did the show, and it's yeah. why people like yourself come on, you get yeah. the chance to... And it's about educating, isn't yeah. it? Um, and, yeah. uh, and that's, yeah, key is the education piece. Yeah. Key is the education piece. All positive stuff. Um, Rob, thanks so much for coming on the show. Um, it goes very quickly, as you know, but it's um, we, could, we could carry on talking, but we'll certainly have you back on at some stage, I'm sure. Um, hopefully you found it. appreciate it. Uh, interesting yourself thank, thank you very much for the opportunity thank, thank you, you and thank you very much for watching um, if you can remember to subscribe it means you'll never miss an episode and we'll see you next time thank you